The Great British Bulldog, traditionally a symbol of national pride. But not this one. This is Pugsley. He's a bully. Treats the family home like a public loo. Bad dog. And he's a sex addict. No. I have threatened to get rid of him. If there's anyone who can turn this hound around, it's Victoria Stillwell. She's been a dog trainer for 10 years, and she's yet to fail. Watch. But what will she make of this bonking bulldog? He's humping for England, isn't he? Yep. Meet Pugsley, a three-year-old pedigree bulldog who lives with Nick, Chantal and her two sons Tyrone and Travis in the Welsh borders. Once upon a time he was a cute, adorable puppy, but then... ..he discovered doggy loving. As soon as they walk in I just know he's going to want them straight away. And he will not stop trying to mount them until the time that they leave. <laughs> He will keep on mounting people and mounting people and mounting people and he won't stop. He won't stop. Despite his bad behaviour, his daddy still loves to spoil him rotten. He ruins him, he tip bits him all the time and spoils him. You've got to discipline him as well and I think you're too soft with him. And despite the arguments, Nick can't help himself. It's just those puppy dog eyes, I suppose. Chantal's biggest gripe is with Pugsley's toilet habits. <sighs> this makes my blood boil. It really, really does. Every night, he pees and poos wherever he fancies. Oh, when I wake up in the mornings, I dread it. It does cause a lot of arguments between us. I mean, I've been drove to tears of it. When it upsets you like that, it upsets me. But I feel that you don't take it as seriously as I do. I do, to course. No, that's how I feel, though. Once or twice, he's peed when we were in the bed. But when you're not there, you'd sneak upstairs and he would pee all over the bed. And he pooed on my bed. And that's not the only way he gets at 13-year-old Tyrone. I am actually scared of my own dog, which sounds pretty funny, but he, he does get a bit vicious with me. I don't want my children to feel that they have to be scared of him. <laughs> I have threatened to get rid of him. I don't, I don't want to get rid of something that I, you know, that I love. No. Victoria Stilwell's been training disobedient dogs for over 10 years, but does she have what it takes to cure this sex-obsessed mutt? Male dogs have to be taught to control their urges. Humping humans is just not on, and ultimately the answer may be castration. To begin with, Victoria will just observe Pugsley's behaviour. Training starts tomorrow. Hey, Pugsley. Pugsley, you're rather magnificent, aren't you? <laughs> I think I'm going to fall in love with you. <laughs> Dang. Pugsley. Dang. Pugsley. Not that Dang. much in love. A few minutes later, Pugsley finds Dang. some more victims. Oh, oh my Pugsley. God. Pugsley. 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 That's terrible. But it's not just Travis and Tyrone's friends that get harassed by Pugsley. He's developed a serious crush on neighbour Craig. So do you come round a lot here? Um, I used to, until he started humping me every time I come round. Right. And I don't bother really that much now. It's me. It's me. Pugsley. <laughs> he's got a really strong grip as well. Yeah, he's very. He is yeah. very strong, isn't he? Suddenly, Pugsley is tempted by some fresh meat. Pugsley. The sound recordist. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Pugsley, no. Humping is not just sexual behaviour. It's also a way dogs exert their dominance. That is one persistent dog. He's humping for England, isn't he? Yep. No Pugsy. Even worse, 13-year-old Tyrone is being relentlessly bullied and bitten. Oh, Pugsy! Do you get this on a regular basis then? <laughs> Whenever I walk out, he bites me. But it's like it seems like it's just a big game. He just bites me for no reason. Okay. You know that yeah. this is absolute play, but it's rough play. <laughs> but he doesn't know how much it hurts. Because, yeah, of course. Why couldn't it be Trav? He doesn't do that to you, then? No, he doesn't, does he? He's never touched Trav, has he? Travis doesn't show that he's afraid of him, though, does he? Yeah, but I am afraid of him, because how many times he's bit me. When he does bite him, I do feel like he does it quite hard. <laughs> Without warning, Pugsley's rough play gets out of hand. Did he just do that now? Yeah. 
What, what were you doing? I was just standing by him and just bit my nose. Naughty boy! Pugsley's really in the doghouse now. I ripped him with his tough. Uh, he hasn't done he's that never before. done that before. I know, I'm just saying, what's the point in biting me for no reason? I don't know why he's done that. I can't believe what I've just seen. It's absolutely outrageous. No wonder Tyrone is scared of Pugsley. We must change the way that Pugsley sees Tyrone and the way that Tyrone plays with Pugsley. Victoria needs to assess Pugsley's exercise regime, or the lack of one. What we normally do is we don't mention the word. OK. And then it's show him the lead time. Come on, Pugs. So there's a bit of a game of cat and mouse at the moment, so then what I have to do is actually get him on the lead then. And then from this point, mm. it's a drag. Pugs, this way. Come on. Come on, Pugs. Pugsley. Come on, Pugs. Here we go. Come on. He really doesn't want to go, does he? Come on. Come on, Pugs, you've got to go for a walk. Come on. Don't want to go for a walk, do you? And that's the and routine, that's, that's really. That's the routine. Mm-hmm. Huh. What should be such a pleasurable thing? It seems to him is just really unpleasant. A bigger problem for the family is Pugsley's offensive toileting routine. I see some pee there. That is where he pees. And he normally poos here as well. You know, and I get so, so upset about it. You know, and it makes us argue. Hmm. As if that's not bad enough, Pugsley also pees on the kids' beds, leaving his scent as a sign of his dominance. While their backs were turned, Pugsley has re-offended in the kitchen. Pugsley, what's that? What is it? Hey, Bad dog. Bad dog. But it's not just Pugsley who's misbehaving. Dad's really not helping the situation. To drag a dog to where it's messed before, to put its nose near it, is really, really bad to do. And the reason is, is dogs have very, very short associations between a behaviour and a reward and a behaviour and a correction. I, yeah, he's looking guilty. Because if you came up to me and went, you are a bad girl. I would go, oh, what have I done? That's why he's looking guilty. And doting dads also for the high jump for allowing Pugsley to eat whenever he wants. I have never seen as much food as this in a bowl before. I mean, it's there if he wants to eat it, you know. So if you didn't have regular set meal times and you just ate throughout the day, would you be able to know when you were going to toilet. It's, it's when he decides to go to the toilet, isn't it? I mean, it's not. Yeah, but perhaps I this is why he's going to the toilet in the house. Ah. Nick also lavishes him with fatty treats. I'd like to give Pugsley some scrambled eggs as a bit of a varied diet. How many eggs are you putting in there? Uh, all of them. Twelve. You're giving him twelve eggs? Twelve eggs. He seems to enjoy it. But it's not just eggs. It's lashings of butter, oodles of milk, and a mountain of cheese. This is heart attack city, this is. You is are it? very naughty. Mm. Health-wise, there's a lot of fat. And it doesn't stop there. There's still dessert. We like to give him an ice pop, a cheese triangle. Right. And a little banana yogurt. Oh, you spoil him. I oh, do, my do. goodness me. Later that day, Victoria sits Pugsley's owners down to read them the riot act. You've got to stop spoiling him. Spoiled dogs are not nice to be around. Spoiled children are not no. nice to be around. And this dog is spoiled. It's getting away with murder. So you're the soft one and you're the hard one. Well, this is what a lot of our arguments are about. And that it is because we can't, sort of... see, we can't be on the same level with him. But then this, uh, this so is it's what... not helping him, is it? If no. we're not on the same know, level know, with him. Because you can't praise him one time and then tell him off another time. That's very confusing. Can't do it. So we've got to be on the same level with him. Got to we've be. got to be. If not, you might as well give your dog yeah. away. Yeah, yeah. Because it will never get better until you're on the same level. Pugsley worries me, his behaviour with Tyrone. Because Tyrone is scared of him. 
and you know he's reason to be you as the dog's owners need to really police it whenever you whenever Tyrone is with him yeah we're go it, it, it's got to have clear cut what he's allowed to do and what he's not allowed to do and that's it but there's still one more thing to address he really he really grabs hold yeah see that really makes me feel sick yeah, this hurts because his claws are hurting my leg right now. I mean, yeah. that's really severe. <clears throat> Will we have to castrate? <clears throat> I don't know. If you're talking about chopping my dog's balls off, you're talking about chopping <clears throat> my balls off because that's the way I feel about it and I'm not going to let you chop my balls off. It is not your balls that are being chopped off. It is your dog's. If you think about what it's like having all of this testosterone going through your body and not being able to do what you're really programmed to do. But then just losing your Ted's about it is not something to think about, is it? What is worse? A risk of an operation or a risk of your dog being put down anyway because it harms a child? Or through mounting. Through mounting one day is going to knock a child over. And that's when it gets serious. Yeah. We could say, no, he's not an aggressive dog. But they're not going to think that. Victoria's here to help us. I know she's here. And I'm, I'm, I'm you just got it I'm in red castration. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Because you I'm, I'm, I'm going to go down every single That's alleyway what we're where saying. she's going to go down. We're every saying you're getting one. heated about the castration part and you might not even have to come to that. I know that. I know that. But I'm just adamant about the castration. I know, but we've just got to see how it goes, haven't we? The next day, it's time for a complete life change for Pugsley and for Nick. The spoiling has to stop, and from now on, Pugsley will be on a time-controlled feeding regime. You are no longer going to free feed him. This timer is going to signal to you when you have to pick the food up. If he doesn't eat the food after 30 minutes, you pick the food up and you throw it away, and he doesn't get fed until the evening. There you go, Pugsley. This means we're going to schedule when he eats so that we'll be able to have more of an idea of when he's going to need to eliminate. From now on, he'll be regularly taken outside to toilet and his access to water will also be controlled. So he has water with his food, but after six o'clock, he can have some ice cubes. Through the night, we don't want to feel the need to pee. And so if you give him five or six ice cubes throughout the evening, that's enough water so that he gets liquid, but slowly. With Nick so opposed to castration, the pressure's on for Victoria to find a technique to curb his really humping. Good. And who better to test the training on than Craig, Pugsley's number one crush. One of the best corrections you can give to your dog is a vocal correction. And the vocal correction that I always use is an ah-ah, uh -uh because it's short and sharp, and it distracts the dog from what it's doing. If he does go up to hump somebody, then it's your responsibility to take action, to get him off that person. When you do the ah-ah uh -uh and he gets off, you must always praise him for the getting off action. So remember, you're really going to clearly delineate what he's doing bad and what he's doing good. I want it as soon as he gets up, ha you're in there. So we're going to make this whole thing unpleasant for him. Yeah. Time to send in the bait. OK, now up to him, right up to him. That's it. Now, good boy. I want your body to leap out of the chair. Ah, ah. I want you to take real action. Ah. Tell him, praise him. Good boy. Remember the timing. You've got one second to correct, you've got one second to praise. Ah! Good boy. Lovely. Good boy. That's it. Good boy. Ah! Good boy. After ten minutes of training, it looks like Pugsley's getting the message. Not jumping up, so that's good. So, Craig, you go, nah, that's so lovely. Oh, it's great. I mean, it's, it's, you can see progress straight away with him. You can see the starting point. Pugsley's passion has been quelled for now, but how long before it resurfaces? Maybe a cold shower will be the answer.
Nick and Chantal are desperate to stop their randy bulldog Pugsley from mounting all their friends. But Nick's not prepared to get him castrated. If you're talking about chopping my dog's balls off, you're talking about chopping my balls off. So Victoria's got to get Pugsley under control without giving him the snip. Wait. But he's still pumped full of testosterone and he takes out his aggression on 13-year-old Tyrone with nips, ah! snaps and bites. It's time to put a stop to it. It really is interesting that he doesn't nip anybody else except you. I know, yeah. We I have know. to devise a way of giving you more confidence and you being able to play with him without him going totally nuts. So I just want you, when you're with him, to be calmer because he can read your body like you would not believe. You mustn't show your fear anymore yeah. because there is nothing to fear from him. I have said to him that P Pugsy can sense that you're scared of him. Instead of you going like that, trying to get him down or going like this, what I want you to do is that I want you to cross your arms, turn your back on him and let your mum and Nick do the work. You can never run away from him. Mm. So if we go downstairs and see how it goes, OK? Yeah. All right. Things don't start well. Yeah, now, no. that's ah! exactly it. That's exactly it, and that's exactly what Good. you mustn't do. Mm. If you just walk very calmly, he is less likely to get fired up and to jump up and mm. try and nip you. Ah! Nick steps in to exert some parental control. Now, remember, turn your back. That's it. By crossing your arms, you're protected. In that way, you're not going to be enticing him to play bite you <laughs> all the time. You've got to be calm and relaxed around this dog. You can't fuss him too much. You can't play with him too much. You've got to take a step back. Yeah. Once Tyrone stays calm around Pugsley, the change in his behaviour is dramatic. He's totally unconcerned. Yeah, he completely ignores me now when I'm like this. If I'm walking quicker, then I attract this attention and he goes for me, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it does help. It's a good result, but Victoria thinks part of the reason Pugsley's playing rough is down to his lack of exercise. She's determined to get him going for walks. I think one of the reasons why he doesn't want to walk is that previously this has been used. These choke chains can really, really hurt and makes what should be pleasurable very unpleasant. So I think we should literally just throw this away. Put a regular collar on him and we'll take him out and see what happens. Come on, Pugs. All right, now let's just go out. But getting him out of the door isn't so easy. And we're just going to wait. But with a combination of encouragement, praise and patience, he should come out the door and we should get him onto the green. Ooh. He's over the first hurdle, but he's not going any further. So Victoria asks Nick to carry him onto the green. Good boy! Yay! Yay. Yay. Nice and green! Boy. He's still really nervous. Yeah. So I just want us to just hang out. Victoria introduces games to help Pugsley associate being outdoors with having fun. Pugsley! With your arms straight, that's it! 20 minutes later, Pugsley's nerves have calmed enough to get him walking on the lead. Are we walking? We're walking. Yeah. We're walking. What a good boy. Oh, he's really good. Yes. Confident dog, like a bulldog should be. Yeah. And he's walking away from home. Good boy. That's the confidence he needs. But later that day, despite the earlier success, Pugsley's humping resurfaces and Victoria's initial technique seems to be falling on deaf ears. He's got his fixation on me now. Sound aversion should be short, sharp and quick and have a quick effect. Don't keep doing it. If it's not working, go on to something else. Could you get those two saucepan lids from up there, please? When he does that on me, bang them very hard. With such an horrendous noise ringing in his ears, Pugsley's soon distracted from his humping. Don't look at him. It's important not to look your dog in the eye when using such dramatic sound aversion because you don't want your dog to associate fear of the noise with fear of his owner. If he doesn't hump me, then you tell him. Good boy. Good Really boy. tell him good boy. What a good boy. 
That night, with Pugsley on his new schedule, there's not a cocked leg in sight. But Victoria's still worried he isn't getting enough exercise. The more you exercise him, the less he's going to hump. So she's come up with an inventive solution. And importantly for Nick, this is the right way to spoil your dog. She's taking Pugsley and the family for a fun doggy workout at the local hydrotherapy pool. The reason why a hydrotherapy pool is so good for Pugsley is because it's a way of him getting exercise, and it's fun. Come on then, Pugsley. In you go. There is a good boy, Pugsley. The pool is equipped with a series of jets, which makes the dog swim hard against the flow. There is a good boy. Good boy. You're a good lad, It's all right. Yes, it is. Hydrotherapy pools allow your dog to exercise in a controlled environment, but at 12 pounds a session, they're not cheap. Alternatively, you could try taking your dog to the local dog-friendly pond or beach. Now Pugsley's had his exercise, will it help to control his desire to mount Tyrone and Travis's friends? The training seems to be working. Although he still jumps up, Pugsley does respond positively to the sound aversion. Lovely. Good. Boy. The exercise she's given him seems to have cooled his passion. That was very good because he went up to the kids and instead of humping them and jumping up on them, he turned away. Yeah. What a difference, though. Yeah. That's I, what it's all oh, about. What a relief. For now, it looks like Pugsley will get to keep his plums. And two weeks later, things have improved. Pugsley's now happy to go for regular walks. Good boy. Tyrone's relationship with Pugsley has completely transformed. He hasn't bit me once, which has been a surprise. So, yeah, I'm not scared of him anymore. And Pugsley's new routine means he's stopped using the house as his personal loo. It's going good, isn't that? It's brilliant. It's mate. brilliant. He started seeing things straight away, didn't he? Yeah, instant. When Victoria returns to check up on them, there's just one little thing. He's still humping. He's still humping. Yeah. Pugsley's humping may not be at danger levels, but it hasn't entirely disappeared. You're still having a problem with the humping. Yeah. What would be the ideal scenario for you now? Well, I would honestly get him castrated. In the I don't. Long run. If I, it... I'd still have to, uh, you know, really be persuaded. Mm. Maybe castration would lessen that humping behaviour. I think we'd have to seriously consider it. <sighs> I've seen a vast improvement in Pugsley. He's a much better behaved dog. He's humping less, but it is still a problem. I can't force Nick into anything, but if Pugsley were my dog, I would opt for castration. So, now the ball's in your court, Nick.